We are joined now by Dr. Raj. He is on the front lines of the battle against the coronavirus at Keck School of Medicine of USC. Good to have you. I said, you know, the first time we had you around, I said, we got to have him back. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, DeMarco. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. Thank you for asking. The first question for you, what are some lung complications that we are seeing right now and that you are seeing in the medical ICU? Well, you know, first, DeMarco, it's really fortunate for most individuals, greater than 80% of people with coronavirus don't end up in the intensive care unit. They have minor symptoms or are asymptomatic. But for that less than 5% that end up in the ICU, what have I seen is that troubles with the ventilator, meaning that we have encountered something called acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is called ARDS. It's nothing new. We've seen it in other respiratory disorders before, but it's so tough to deal with it when it comes to COVID-19. Some of the traditional things we have used for ARDS, such as giving low breath volumes, giving low pressure at the end of expiration, they're not working as well. We need to think outside the box. So one of the things we've been doing is actually ventilating these patients on their stomach. We call that the prone position. And people always ask me, why are you doing that? Is because when COVID-19 affects the lungs, it's a patchy disease. There's some good lung, some bad lung, and by flipping them on their stomach, it may improve the blood flow to the good lung, helping out with that oxygenation. But another big thing I've seen is super infection with bacteria. And that's why I'm such a big advocate of being up to date with your vaccinations, such as the streptococcus vaccine, because strep pneumonia is the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia. And you can get that super infection also. But the last thing, DeMarco, that I want to bring up is going to be clotting. I have seen these blood clots in the lungs. We use the term pulmonary embolism. And not only is it trouble to oxygenate these patients, it actually does a number on their blood pressure. It lowers it really bad, making it very difficult to manage in the medical ICU. So Dr. Raj, is the clotting only in the lung? Wow, great question. So no, I mean, this is so humbling that coronavirus affects every single organ in the body. And just recently, we talked about strokes, about patients with only mild symptoms that go home and get a impaired blood flow to the brain. So it's scary. And what about the heart? We could do a whole segment on that. Coronavirus definitely affects the heart, but you could have clotting in the vessels feeding the heart, causing a heart attack, especially in those who have heart disease. So the answer is the inflammation is everywhere it's in the vessels and it's troublesome yeah there was a report that came out about strokes uh, impacting those in 30s and 40s the final question for you any advice yeah. for your patients with asthma oh yes you know 25 million people in the united states have asthma that's one in 13 it's one of the most common causes of emergency department visits so you can imagine i want to tell my asthma patients you're not more likely to get covid 19 but if you do you're going to have a tougher course than a non-asthmatic. So please be up to date with your medications. Be uh, Have an asthma action plan with your doctor so you know what to do if you get a flare. And right now I'm bringing this up because it's allergy season. And this is the first allergy season we're sharing with COVID-19. So people are going to be wondering, are my symptoms allergies or are there going to be COVID-19? So my last thing I wanted to say is if they're allergy symptoms, I always say think of the itchies, itchy eyes, itchy nose, itchy throat. For COVID-19, think about fevers. Mm. People with allergies usually get fevers, shortness of breath and cough. And the big thing right now is going to be I can't smell. And that's an overlapping symptom that we see both with people with COVID-19. And of course, if you have allergies and you have a stuffy nose, you're not going to smell. If you have any questions, please talk to your primary care doctor. That is very comforting uh, to hear. And uh, we do have time for one last question. I have oh, we do? Like, long okay. lines uh, at some of the dispensaries. And sure. I also hear people saying, OK, well, this is not a good time uh, to smoke because it can make your chances greater for uh, complications. Are you hearing anything about that? Oh, and it's not just smoking. And I have heard about that. It's vaping too. It's anything that causes irritation to your lungs. Remember, it's that systemic inflammation. But being a lung doctor, I will find any excuse to tell any of my patients to stop smoking. But you're right. If there's any motivation, this is the time now. It's not going to help you. Great comment, DeMarco. All right, Dr. Raj, I think you did a, a, another good job. So you know what? You're going to be coming back. Just so you know. Thank you so much. We appreciate everything. Thank you.